Well, hello, beautiful people. Today, we're gonna take a first look at Topaz Labs Photo AI. Now, for those of you that are wondering what it is, it's basically one platform that handles Sharpen AI, Denoise AI, sorry, future me here. That's actually not correct. The individual programs have way more manual controls. This is a slimmed down version. First off, let's take a look at the top menu screen here. Under File, this is how you're going to open the images into Topaz Labs. Right beside it, you have your view options to zoom to fit, zoom in and out. Then we have Autopilot, and this is to allow auto upscaling. And these are for images that might be low resolution that you're trying to upscale. The account section is whether you want to log in and out of your accounts. Then the processor section here is for those of you that have powerful graphics cards like 3080s, 3090s, whatever it is, and you want the graphics card to do the bulk of the work, you can switch it here between graphics card or your CPU. Chances are if you're on a laptop, CPU might be best for you or if you have an underpowered graphics card. You might want to experiment what works best but so far I've found that auto will detect your best settings. And then the last option here we have is the help. You can give feedback, get support, or open the log folder. And this is great if you experience crashes or any system issues, you can go into your log folder and share that with support so they can help you with any tech issues. And you can simply drag and drop your images here or click on browse images to choose where your folder is. So I'm just going to dump it here. So at the bottom left here is the progress bar where it's scanning the image. Let me adjust this here. I've got it on split screen view to show a before and after. And you'll notice on the right here that it's already detected what the image needs. So it's applied some denoise AI and it's got this feature called recover faces. And we'll talk about that in a second. Now, if we look at the before and after right here on the left is your before, here's the after. And you see the original image was slightly blurry. I missed focus on this. If we look at the right, you see that the face is a lot more clearer here. And this is without using Sharpen AI. This is using the Recover Faces mode here. If we zoom in closer here, you see what a difference that is. To switch your views, you can go down here. You have your single view that's going to just show you the main image. You can zoom out a bit here. Then we have this view where you have this sliding bar to do a manual before and after. If I zoom in a little bit here, we see the before and we see the after. You can also manually choose if you want to look at it at 100%, 50%, or you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So on the very top right here, we have our navigation window and you can move this around to reframe the area you want to look at within the image. Now in this section here, we have the autopilot section and basically this is where Topaz just does its own thing and it detects what it thinks is best for you. Of course, you can make adjustments. Now if I hover over subject, you're going to see the mask of the subject. On the right of it is a refine button and when you click on that, you see that it's on default. There's also an option for portrait or landscape. So I'm going to switch it to portrait. And then as you see, it kind of picks up other people here, which is not what I want to do. So we're going to change it to default. And then it's got a sensitivity slider. So if I bring this to the left, you see the mask gets thinner. And if I bring it all the way to the right, the mask is like bleeding <laughs> into the background there. So you can adjust the mask accordingly if it's not working for you. The only thing I wish is that it had a brush where you could manually make changes. And of course, this is the softness of the mask. You can make it softer. Let me zoom in here. You see now it's starting to feather on the outsides of the mask. If I bring it all the way in, it's going to be a lot cleaner and tighter, which you may or may not want to do. So you really just have to find a happy medium that works for you or let the system do it for you. You see what's happening in the background here. It's kind of playing around with the faces in the back. If you look here and you hover over this, it says it's recovering 17 low quality faces. I don't want that to happen. This isn't a group photo. So we can go under recover faces and just turn that off. Instead, we're going to open up sharpen and let it sharpen the image on its own. 
I'm going to bring the strength up to, let's say, about 55 and see how that works. Now let's do a before and after preview here. Here's the before. Here's the after. It's sharpening it pretty well, and I could probably bring it up even more. And what I like about this, it's got a selection for subject only. If you deselect it, it's going to sharpen all the other things around it. So we want to put that on. And because the results are, they're okay, we are now going to trigger the recover faces here and to get that back. Now, what I would do in the background here, I would bring this in like say on one photo raw, create a layer and mask out the background here and just keep the subject nice and sharp. But as you see here, it does a really good job at recovering the details of the face. So here's another side-by-side -side before and after look. Now, if we view it at 30%, you see the results here. One other thing I wanted to point out under sharpen, you have options for lens blur or motion blur. Now let's do an example specific for noise. So we're going to click on browse images. I'm going to bring in this one. This was shot with ISO 12,800. And if you look at the before and after, you see that it's done a pretty good job, even at the auto settings. If I back off here, we can see a before and after. Very clean job. I really love how good at Topaz Denoise AI works. Compared to the others, I would say this is at the top of its class. Now, if we do the split screen view, you see the before and the after. Very, very clean results. Let's zoom in a little closer here so you can see all the color noise, the luminance noise. All that noise is gone and there's very little artifacting. And one thing to keep in mind, if you have the previous bundle, you should get Photo AI for free. Be sure to check out your account and see if it's available. If not, contact support. Also, you have more controls with the individual programs, but so far I find with it being an all-in-one platform, it does a really good job and I'm actually spending less time doing anything. Now this time I want to look at Sharpen, but I'm going to use it as a plugin with an On One Photo Raw. If I zoom into the image, you're going to see the eyes are super soft because the focus is on the hands. I was using a manual vintage lens, the Helios 44.2, and I missed focus here. So I'm simply going to go into layer here, filters, Topaz Labs, Topaz Photo AI, and it's going to import it into Topaz. I'm going to leave it at 100% so we can see the results. Here on the left, you see the before, and here on the right, you see the after. If you notice, the eyes are a lot more sharper and a lot more focused along with the face. Let me back off here. And as we look at the side by side, you can see the clear difference. Even if we look at the logo here, it is much more defined. It's not exact, but certainly acceptable. Let's zoom out a little bit more here and you can clearly see the difference. It does such an amazing job. Now, the only thing is the hand, if you look at it up close, will be a bit over sharpened. So what I would do is save this. If I go to the bottom and click save to on one photo raw, it's going to process it and create a layer in On One Photo Raw. So back in On One Photo Raw, you see it's created another layer. If I toggle between the two, there's the before, there's the after. I can click on the mask here and simply paint out the hand here so it's not as sharp while I keep the face in focus. And I could basically do that for the rest of the image. But so far, very, very impressed. Now for the last image, I'm going to bring in this image. It's an old wedding photo when me and my wife got married. The size is 453 by 604, 72 DPI. I can't find the original. It was shot with an old digital camera that was like, I don't know, five megapixels, maybe less. <laughs> but you see here, it's detected to remove noise and recover the faces. If we look at the before and the after, you see all the detail has come back. Now let's max it out because I want to get the biggest image I can and of course I want to get the best results. There's the before and there's the after and the size I have now is 2718 by 3624. Let me switch views here and you see especially on my wife's face here you see a lot of the details brought back. It looks fairly natural too. There's the before there's the after. Let's back off just a little bit here. 
we do the before, there's the after. Back then I had a bit more hair and I was quite a bit thinner too. <laughs> Both of us were. But for me this is really good because like old images that I had back then with low resolution, I can now upscale them make copies and save them, print them, whatever you want to do. Now overall I'm quite happy with Topaz Photo AI. Having it on one platform is so very useful. Again as I mentioned before if you've recently purchased the bundle it should be free to you. And of course as I said before stay tuned for some comparison videos where I'm going to put Denoise AI versus On One Photo Raws No Noise AI very soon. But until then I'll see you when I see you.